Mark Jeffrey, uh, the uh, the pressure person here, and this is the fourth in our series about pressure, and it's all about pressure, how to win the big points, big matches, and win more than you do. And this is about understanding the logic behind pressure. So the first thing is I want to give you a few, a few statistics. An ITF survey, survey said that 70% of amateur tennis players say that they always play better in practice than in matches, and the same 70% not unnaturally are frustrated because they know they could and should win more matches than they do. And the single reason why that happens is that they have no idea what pressure is and they never hone processes and self under pressure. And when that happens, you can have the tactics, they go out the window. You can have drilled your shots, shots go out the window. And you could think you're confident and bravado and arrogance and that goes out the window too. So you're not on your own, 70% are in this situation. Same ITF did a survey of ATP players that have got into the top 100, so the only people making money out of the sport. And they credited the difference between that and the other 500 that were world class 40% of their success they put down to uh, pressure and training themselves. And as they went from top 100, top 50, top 10, top 4, more and more and more, 80% they said was about pressure and training of self. So I ask you the question, just think how many hours you've spent on court in your life so far training yourself to hit the ball? Just think, come up with a number. Now have you spent 40% of that time on training the biggest muscle between your ears that counts? And the answer is no Mark, I haven't. Have you, tr have you even allocated 4% to training the most important muscle at all under pressure and big points? 4%. Apologetically, no Mark, I haven't. Understand now that in a 60 minute tennis match for 50 minutes the ball is not in play. 25 seconds between points, 90 seconds changing of ends, 50 minutes the ball is not in play. Those 50 minutes are more important than the 10 minutes because when the ball is not in play, thoughts, feelings and emotions get you and they take you wherever they want to take you. So the processes that we do about pressure, each and every point makes the big difference do you control your thoughts feelings and emotions or do thoughts feelings and emotions control you does circumstance dictate to you do you dictate to circumstance does pressure dictate to you do you dictate to pressure all those things happen in the 50 minutes of the hour and then lastly just a couple of years ago the ATP added a new little metric to their scoring system so when you go on the ATP website there will be first serves in and return of serves and second serves and all these stats uh, with different players, Raonic and the others, different areas. And then they had an under pressure section. So they now categorize all those big points and did you nail them? And it will not surprise you that number one in the pressure charts is Djokovic. Number two in the pressure charts is Federer. And as Nadal has slipped down to eight, and I don't understand that why that is. So the more that you play best under pressure, strangely, the more you're number one, world number two, Grand Slam champions. So those are some of the stats. And now we'll go into a little bit of um, training about the logic of pressure. So in the other series, we previously talked about the the biggest neurochemical dump of chemicals like testosterone, adrenaline, cortisol, dopamine, and more just flooding through your system. It, it is the, the biggest legal neuro dump of chemicals that you'll ever have. Amazing. So that is flooding through your system. So if you don't know what's going on, you will be in overwhelm. Your first reaction was probably going to be freeze. Well, you don't have to freeze too long on a big point for you're out of the game. Mentally, you might be flighting out of here. And even if you're trained, like, I've been trained as mentally tough, 
you'll be fighting, but you'll be fighting stiff. And stiff is no good to be man or beast. You've got to be fighting like a Federer, like a Muhammad Ali, nice and loose for it to be any good. So let me tell you that, so we've got this thing going on and you're either harnessing it and you're assassin-like, dispassionate, or it's wafting all over you and you're in the land of wherever you are. So under pressure, information comes to you quicker, but it's flawed. The information doesn't come from your neuron synapses is down to your muscles and they don't all arrive at the same time. They're staggered. So that's why you shank and make more mistakes under pressure. So you've got that going on. Now let's look about how much information you're trying to process neurons, synapses, muscles. Just think about it. You've got to first of all process. This is millions of bits of info per second. Where has the person hit the ball? What height? What bounce? What spin? What power? What direction? And then move your body. <laughs> process to get there. And now you're there just at the right time. And now you've got to process every little connective tissue and muscle of your body from your ankles right through your body to hitting thing to hit it just well. Flawed information coming to you quicker. So you can see, you know, this is millions of bits per second of info on flawed info to get it just right. Because if you're five degrees out at point to point of contact, probability is it's going to drift in court or it's going to be too short or it hits the net. It's not, not good. So we are wired, just so you know, unless you're trained, we're wired as cavemen to be in protective manical, mechanical conscious controlling mind. Analyze, protect yourself, Sonny. Let's do this freeze frame by freeze frame. And that's processing information at 50 bits per second. 50 bits per second. Yet we all know that when we're not thinking on the practice court and relaxing, because it doesn't mean anything, we play the best tennis of our lives. And that's because we're in 14 million bits per second. 50, 14 million bits per second. So how, unless you're trained, when your DNA and your caveman is screaming at you, I'm gonna protect you, Marky. I'm gonna make sure we're just gonna do this just right. How can we trigger ourselves to trust our intuitive, be in flow self at 14 million bits per second. So those are some of the things about the logic of pressure. So now listen to the Wimbledon and the Grand Slams as we get to the semis and the finals and the chirping of the media, the commentators, the TV analysts, all talking about pressure and this mythical beast the big point player that only seems to come out at semis and finals. Listen to that. And also listen to the silence of crickets with no one anywhere ever saying, yes, you too, my son, could be trained to be a big point player. Until now, because that's what we're all about. So if this resonates with you, just simply download. We've put together a real distilled training guide of kind of all my life in the military on the tennis court and four years of research with the SES with personal transformation and uh, world-class tennis experts put it all together into a little quick read about how you can five steps to become a big point player subscribe to the channel because each week we give you two videos that might be your own personal get out of jail pressure prison and give us your comments we love every comment, we reply to everyone. And lastly, please, because we're on a mission, there is absolutely no reason why we should go through lives narrowly losing when we could have narrowly won. We just need training and a guide. But don't share it to the mate that you want to kick the butt off.